Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. Today we'll look at the second lesson in Chapter 2 on the respiratory system, the mechanics of breathing. As always, we'll be focusing only on the learning objectives found in the official Cambridge textbook and we'll follow the exam syllabus exactly. There are three learning objectives today. To identify the location of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles, to understand the role of these muscles during normal breathing, and to describe the mechanics of breathing. In my last video, we learned that air follows a pathway when we breathe from the mouth and nose to the alveoli, where gaseous exchange takes place. But how does the air get there and what does the process look like? The process of breathing, otherwise known as pulmonary ventilation, is controlled by muscles. These muscles contract or relax, forcing air to move into or out of the lungs. We'll take a look at the diaphragm first, which is a large muscular sheet that can be found at the base of the chest cavity, just below the lungs. It flattens, moving downwards as it contracts and domes upwards as it relaxes, changing the volume of the chest cavity. The intercostal muscles sit just between the ribs. They cause the rib cage to move up and outwards as they contract and down and inwards as they relax. So how do these muscles enable us to breathe? We'll move on to our second and third learning objectives now as we take a look at the mechanics of breathing. The technical term for breathing in is inspiration and there are five steps or processes that you need to know. Firstly, the diaphragm contracts, causing it to flatten slightly and move downwards. Meanwhile, the intercostal muscles also contract, causing the rib cage to move upwards and outwards. These actions combined cause the chest cavity and the lungs within to expand, meaning their volume or the space inside increases. Now, when the lungs expand, air particles within spread out to fill the larger space and in doing so get further apart from one another. This means that the air pressure inside the lungs drops below that of the outside air. Since particles move from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure, oxygen-rich atmospheric air rushes into the lungs in response. At this point, if you feel like you need to recap what happens to the air once it's inside the lungs, click the link to watch the previous lesson in the syllabus, the pathway of air and gaseous exchange. You'll also need to be able to describe the mechanical process of breathing out, otherwise known as expiration. Essentially, this is the opposite of what we've just covered, so pause the video now if you feel able to describe the five steps. When we breathe out, the diaphragm relaxes and domes upwards. The intercostal muscles also relax, causing the ribcage to move downwards and inwards. The chest cavity gets smaller as a result of these actions and lung volume decreases. This causes the air pressure within the lungs to rise above that of the atmospheric or outside air. And just as before, this pressure difference causes carbon dioxide rich air to rush out of the lungs before the next inhalation. Before we wrap up the lesson, I'd like to take a quick look at the long-term effects of training on the respiratory muscles as you'll need to know this further down the line. To put it simply, sustained exercise forces you to breathe faster and take deeper breaths. Over time, this increases the strength of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles, which in turn enables them to contract more forcefully, thus further increasing the volume of the chest cavity and the lungs. As a result, more oxygen is able to enter the body with each breath, which enables particularly aerobic athletes to compete at higher intensities and for longer periods of time. Well done. You've just covered everything you need to know for topic 2.2 on the respiratory muscles and the mechanics of breathing. Why don't you pause the video here and cross check what you know against the knowledge checklist. You can find complete lessons on every topic included in the anatomy and physiology chapter by visiting my channel or come back next week for part 2.3 on breathing volumes and minute ventilation. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I will see you in the next one.